Hey, welcome back to Let's Get Cooking, Nevada County's highest rated cooking show on public access filmed here in this studio. And boy, do we have a special show for you today. I'll introduce you to our guest chef momentarily. But before I do, I want to get um, one thing out in the open. Uh, you may notice there's a disparity in height between myself and the guest chef. And we spoke earlier about this. We did. We did. And, uh, you know, jokes about people's physical appearance, they're the lowest hanging fruit type of joke. They're not, it's cheap humor. And I'm not going to uh, go down that path. You were pretty clear about it. You were adamant. In fact, I'd say you were even short with me when I brought it up. Mm. So let's meet our guest chef today, Susan Scheinkopf. Well, a nice round of applause for Susan. Huh? Uh, Susan, oh, you're moving up in the world. Hello there. In the world. Uh, we have never met before today, have we? We, that is absolutely a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. Uh, Sue and I have known each other, we were trying to figure out, 26 years? 26 maybe? years or so, yeah. yep. And uh, it was still this height the whole time. Yeah, she's grown on me, but again, I'm not doing those, <laughs> those uh, horrible uh, jokes. And uh, you may notice today I felt casual enough to wear a softball jersey. Sue and I played together on mm -hmm. Team Etc. back in the Bay Area in San Francisco. Team Etc. right there. Right here, there. ETC. And as a special treat for you and also to really drive our sound woman bananas, we're going to do the cheer. You ready? You want to do an old oh. ETC cheer? Wow. Remember okay. how to do it? I think so. Okay, let's try Should it. I remember this. how to do it. All right. E C. And now that we have that out of the way, so what are you making for us today? So I'm making pad thai for you today. Um, pad thai? I, I, pad thai. Oh, pad thai. Oh, that makes so much it more sense. I couldn't I, figure out why you were excited about bad thai. This is going to be good Thai food called pad thai. Pad thai. I love the pad thai. The iconic, well-known, popular dish from Thailand. Oh, wonderful. Which is actually a really interesting history. It's not a... Um, historic old recipe. It was created in the 1930s just for tourism. They kind of wanted to boost their nationalism and they thought if they had a dish that would bring people in it would be awesome and so they created pad thai which just means Thai stir fry. Um, this is, I'm not trying to be funny here, this is, as you can probably gather, I'm not trying to be funny, but this is in Thailand in the 30s mm -hmm. The Isn't that minister. a long way for an American tourist to go for takeout food? You're, I mean, that is... That's true. That's true. Probably cold Maybe they weren't thinking about just the Americans or other people, other tourists in the world, right? They're only thinking but about it the is, Americans. But it is interesting that this has become one of their most well-known dishes. And everybody seems to love it. It's always kind of a mystery. So um, it's a great dish to kind of break down and show you and make it more approachable to make it home. Now, as you can see the table here, there's a lot of ingredients which Sue will take us through. How did you learn uh, to whip up pad thai? So I, um, I love to cook, as you might remember, yeah. and I've always had cooking in my life for, uh, in different ways for forever. And I also love to travel, and I try to go places, new places all the time, to countries and other places all over the world. And when I do, I take cooking classes. And last year, I had a fantastic solo trip to Southeast Asia. Oh. And I went to four countries and I took cooking classes in all the countries. I went to Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, and Vietnam. And I took an amazing class with um, a wonderful teacher, Grandma's Cooking School. Her name was Rachel. I took a tech class with her in Chiang Mai, and she taught us Pad Thai. And so I came home and started practicing, and this was right before lockdown. And so once lockdown came, I was kind of practicing even more because everyone was cooking. And from that, I started doing virtual cooking classes. And so I've been doing those um, since last May for um, different groups of people. And my goal through all of these dishes is to, um, is to inspire curious cooks to explore new flavors and travel the world through the kitchen. Oh. And so I'm hoping that this dish will do that for you. Wonderful. Yeah. I, and I can, I've known Susan for quite a while, as I said, and I can vouch she's a tremendous cook. And we'll put up all the contact info if you're, you're interested in connecting with Sue uh, after this. Yep. Well, let's Sounds get started. Let's okay, see what we awesome. Have here. So the first thing we're going to do is just going to kind of go through the, the ingredients. There are quite a few, but, you know, once you have them all together, it's easy to put this together in the, in the wok or a skillet. And so once you have kind of all your ingredients together, have you ever heard of the term mise en place? Oh, mise en place. 
That is, uh, I think that's next to Irving Plaza in New York City. Uh, exactly. Mise yeah. en place. Mise en place is a fancy French term for everything in its place. And chefs use that term to have everything ready to go uh -huh. so that you're ready when, you're, when your wok is hot or your skillet's hot, you're all ready. You don't have to measure anything out. So the fact so that's that I'm what standing I did. here, I'm mise en place. Yes, that's a good way to look at it. Thank Absolutely. Much, Me too, on this little crate here. Look at how much we've learned already. Okay. And the show's not even, what, three minutes old? It's only going to get better. <laughs> So I'm going to show you the veggies we have in this one are bean sprouts. Right. And I'm going to put some of these on a plate because what we like to do for this dish is have a few raw vegetables and then the rest of it gets cooked in the pod thai. Right. So there's different textures, uh, which is right, nice. Sure. So these are the bean sprouts. And these are gar garlic chives. They come from the garlic. And um, if you don't have these, you can just use green onions. It works great too, but okay. I found these. I'm going to cut these up. I'm going to cut off the ends. Throw them down here. And I'm going to cut these into about two inch pieces. And I'm going to do that as well. Put some of these, whoop, some of these on the plate over here. It's always really pretty at the end to see this pretty plate with the, with the noodles. And then we'll put the rest in the bean sprout bowl. And then we've got our carrots. So we want our carrots in the same shape, which is called julienne or matchstick. Oh, ah, okay. But I'm gonna use this handy dandy tool, which is a hand shredder, and it's got these zigzags on top. And so when you use it on the carrot, it makes these great strips. Now in French, the hand shredder is called the shred de men. <laughs> uh, so you can use shred that in these on class when you're ordering wine. I'm sure you'll really impress the um, nature of meat. This is something you can find in Asian markets and also online. I actually brought it back from Thailand because I didn't think I'd find one here. But you can find them in a lot of stores and you can find it online pretty hand easily. Hand shredder. Hand shredder. Oh, it makes, yep. makes and it just It's fun to use for carrots and your name and isn't hickama. Julienne, so it's more of a Suzanne. Susan, Susan, yeah. Very so I'm going to put also some of these here okay. for the end, and the rest we're going to put in our bean sprout bowl. Whoop! Stay still, walk. I think you wobble Listen to me. And walk there a little bit. I'm going to do just a little more with the other one. And the carrots and the bean sprouts are very typical um, vegetables. But what's nice about learning how to do this at home is you can use really any vegetable you have in the fridge. Just keep in mind that it cooks quick, so yeah. you want to use um, vegetables that cook quick, like at peppers. At the same speed, probably, yeah. right? Peppers, um, so it doesn't, jicama. So this is not quite an empty your fridge kind of uh, dish. I always thought it had to be specifically this. this no, that, that's what's really nice about it. There's lots of different ways you can play around with this. These are mostly the typical vegetables you'll find. Mm. But it's, it is really good with red pepper. It's good with jicama. If you cut up some broccoli really small, and just as long as it'll cook quickly, you could do that as well. Um, yeah, so those are the, the vegetables. And the next thing we have is the aromatics, and that just kind of flavors everything. And for this, we're going to use a shallot. And if you don't have a shallot, you can use a garlic, mm -hmm. you know, clove of garlic. Yep. Um, shallot, I have never used more shallots than this year when I've been doing all this Asian food. They really use a lot of um, shallots, which is kind of a cross between an onion and um, a garlic. So it's kind of a, in, right in the middle. So, Don't get me started about the price of shallots this year. Crazy. Oh. So you take off the end, and if you take the flat part of your knife, just like a garlic, if you kind of smash down a little, you can just, it loosens it up just a little. So you're not smashing to obliteration just you are to not, get it. Exactly. Just, just to get, get the started. skin loose. Yeah, That's a little better. trick. Cut off the end again. Smash down. And it should kind of come off. If you do this with a garlic clove, it works super easy. These are a lot thinner, so it's not quite as easy, but the same idea. Kind of something I learned in my class. So uh, if the price of shallots is getting to you, uh, this is a good way to work out the aggressions is by just smashing them with a knife. And, and for these, we're just going to cut them into, I'm just going to ignore some of his jokes. <laughs> she's, been, she's been ignoring I've my jokes. I've been listening. Yeah, yeah, I've been hearing them a long time. We're going to cut these just into really thin slices. We're not going to dice them. We're going to keep them in the same shape as everything else, kind of long and thin. No, long and thin. I got Yeah, them. so these are just going to be little half moons. 
It's probably a little more than we need. And I'm going to put these right in the tofu bowl. We're going to cook these together. Even though the tofu is not an aromatic, this is tofu that we're using that I've pressed for about 30 minutes in paper towel just to get the water out. Let's talk about that. Okay. Um, if I don't have a tofu press, I take paper towels and I just sit on it for 30 minutes? You just, you please don't do that. No, that's not what I do. I don't think, I don't oh, think you're right. You probably was like, put books you on just, it or You just press it down. You just press it with your hand. You can put another plate on top. I found that just putting it with some paper towel on top is enough okay. to pull the water out. You but it's really out. a great way to, a great method to do with tofu at any time because it pulls the water out and then the sauce or any of the other ingredients you're using will kind of get into the tofu uh, right. better we'll than, better. yeah, and a lot of people don't like mm -hmm. tofu for that reason because it's kind of watery, but if you do this, it really helps for the texture as well. And just to be clear, everyone, Susan is saying tofu, not toad food. <laughs> That'd be a weird thing to put toad food into your cooking. But, uh, Let's just but okay. we gotta get that out Moving on. And I'm going to show you now, I'm going to, we're not going to use this for a while, but I'm going to show you this awesome trick for cutting a lime. Oops. So a lot of people, when you cut a lime open, and you try to squeeze it with your hand, it's really hard to squeeze. I don't know if you've ever, if you like margaritas or mojitos, yes. but it's hard to squeeze and that's because they're really fibrous in the middle. So what I learned from my teacher in Chiang Mai is to cut it just at the end, at the right side of the middle. You see that? It's okay, not- a little off center. Just a little off center. Right. And when you do that, you miss all the, all the pith. Ah, that's all the in the pith. middle. Okay. Yeah. And then you put it on its um, flat on its side, and you do it once again, just off a little center. off center. Yeah. And you have one more piece that doesn't have any pith. Ah. And it's all left here. And you just angle your knife, and then you have three beautiful pieces of lime. And that's a great trick for making drinks, for making pad thai. Anytime you want a small piece of lime that you just want to squeeze, this is a game changer. Do you mind if I jump you. in just for a second? I don't think they're teaching you that on Nevada County now, I'm, or the musicians, only on this show here. Not that we're competitive here in Nevada County. It's a pretty County special media. trick. Just wanted, that's pretty awesome. It's pretty can special we get, trick. Can we get a round of applause? Isn't that awesome? Yeah. <laughs> pretty awesome. That was a free trick. Too. That was a free trick, free a freebie. Trick. <laughs> it didn't cost a thing. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is put our sauce together, okay. um, which is really the essence of the pad thai. Um, the Thai food often brings in sweet, sour, spicy, and uh, sweet, sour, spicy, and... What's the last one? Sweet, sour, spicy. And, sweet, sour, spicy. oh my God, what I totally forgot. Forget? Sweet, sour, spicy. Sweet. Salty. Salty. Thank you very much, sir. That's what I wanted to make sure you felt you felt Yeah, no, you, you, in I this. see what you did there. So it's a sweet, Probably sour, right and I got a little bit of carrot in here. I'm going to pull that out. And so you know, the, it's mm -hmm. such a, well, maybe this comment's premature, but it is such a satisfying dish. And if you've never had pad thai, you really should get it. I mean, it's such good comfort yeah, food. It's, it's a, delicious. It's a it's delicious wonderful. food. It's, it's a, a delicious dish. Meal. Yeah, I'm excited to, to show everyone. So this is the tamarind. Have you ever heard of tamarind? Uh, fruit? No, I have not. So tamarind is a pod-like fruit that's very sour. And when it gets pressed, it gets into a thicker paste like this, a thicker kind of liquid. Right. And you can buy this. It looks like this in the in the jar. This is a Thai version. So this is tamarind juice, you call juice, it? Juice, concentrate, paste. paste. Oh, concentrate, yeah. okay. Yep. And you can find this at Asian markets. You can also find it online. So it's super easy. And it stays in the fridge for months. Oh, it's wonderful. So when you do buy it, you can just keep it for I actually lost my job dishes. at the tamarind factory because I couldn't concentrate, but that's a different story. <laughs> We'll so we're going to put the tamarind in. That's about, there we go. I didn't get a spoon, but that's fine. And how much do you think that is? Uh, about a quarter cup. Quarter cup, okay. And then we're going to do two tablespoons of fish sauce, which is also a very typical Asian ingredient. Okay. And fish sauce is made from fermented anchovies. This is my preferred brand. Ah. Also lasts in the fridge or the cupboard for months. Um, it's made it would in our house. <laughs> made from fermented anchovies, super salty, super kind of fishy, yeah. but a little bit goes a long way and it really adds an awesome flavor to a lot of different kinds of dishes, not just Thai, not just Asian and Thai. Also prepared as in tamar paste and tofu, they take the fish and they just press it for 30 minutes. Mm. It takes quite a lot longer That's than that. That's not true. But, um, so this is two tablespoons. Two tablespoons of fish sauce, yeah. right? And then we have one tablespoon of soy sauce. So they use a lot of soy in Asian foods as well. Just two different kinds of salty. 
And then we have our palm sugar, which I'm using, but you can also just use regular sugar. Um, regular white sugar or brown sugar. Palm sugar. Yeah. Does and will that dissolve? Is that? It will. We're going to microwave this just for a couple minutes, uh -huh. and I chopped it up. This is what it looks like. Oh. It um, comes in these little bricks, and it's got kind of a caramely sweet taste. So it's similar to brown sugar. Um, also easy to find in Asian markets and online. Okay, you can wonderful. use any kind of sugar you have in the house. And well, if we were speaking earlier, we can do substitutes if we don't have this. Exactly, stuff, right? yeah. You can use white sugar, brown sugar. If you're trying to go low on sugar, you can use monk fruit, which is a big low carb sugar oh. now. Um, yeah, so something just to balance the sour, because you'll know when we taste this yeah. how sour it is. Um, could you get me, could you stir that up and, I'd be happy and to. Um, put that in the microwave so for about 20 seconds? I think I'd be using a oh, spoon, I suppose. Sorry, I'm going to also give you the water. So we also need about a quarter. A quarter cup of water, and that's and just to thin it out so that the noodles can absorb all of that sauce. Okay, and if I don't have water, what would be a good substitute for mm, that? That's a hard one. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, you've got to entertain for yeah. a few minutes here. I'll be right back. Um, well, I had an awesome time in Thailand, and I think that um, one thing I love about taking cooking classes when you go to other countries, it's one of the best ways to respect and understand another people's country and culture is by um, understanding their food because I think that everywhere in the world people are proud of their dishes and their heritage and they love showing us and when you break bread together and you cook together it just connects us and I think that for me that's always a fun thing to do when I'm um, when I'm in another country and you've or traveled even in all the, over the world States. to do yeah, this, right? Yeah, yeah, it was really, it's a, you know, a lot of people think that you gotta see all the sites, but this is really a wonderful way to just spend a few hours with a local and get to know them and, and get to ask questions about their, their lives and their food, so. Awesome, okay, thank I you, think, sir. Uh, I think that's good. And the rest of it'll cook in the pan. I think that was totally in my skill set. Yeah. No, should that have dissolved? That's okay. Is it's that fine. Right? It'll cook in the hot pan, so that's great. Let me just give that, yeah, give that a little okay. stir. So, so you, you can already smell how this, good it is. You may not have this utensil at home, but I just used a spoon <laughs> to stir the sauce. So just make sure you have spoons at yeah, home. Yeah, so you can, you can either get this all dissolved or it will also dissolve in the in the pan. If you use white sugar, you probably don't even need to do that because it'll just dissolve yeah. on its own. Okay, so that's ready. And one more thing for the aromatics that I forgot was dried shrimp. Oh, yeah. So these are, from, these are dried little bits of shrimp, and they're also a salty element, and they add a texture. These are completely optional, also found in Asian markets, mm -hmm. but I like to use them. Um, and since I had them, I'm throwing them in. So this is our aromatics. This is our sauce right here we just put together. We have our veggies. I'm going to get rid of all these bowls. And then we have our protein. And the two things we're going to be using, it's usually very typical to have eggs in pad thai. Okay. If you're strictly vegetarian, you can just remit, uh, vegan, you can just not add the eggs. Oh. We're going to leave them whole, and I'll show you why when we start cooking. And then we have, we're using shrimp today. Okay. You can also use um, thin, thinly sliced chicken is a nice um, addition if you want instead okay. of shrimp. Or you can use none of that. And again, if you're strictly vegetarian Straight or vegan, vegan, you can yeah. just omit this. And also, speaking of um, vegans and vegetarians, fish sauce has anchovies in it. But you can find vegetarian fish sauce now. I did not know that. So that's a nice, um, nice thing to use if you're a vegan. Or you can just add more soy sauce. Okay. okay? I've learned so much already. Yeah. And then the last couple things we have besides our main star of the noodles is some peanuts. I'm going to put a few of these on the platter as well. And we have some um, spice. Yep. It's a Fresh, red, pepper. red pepper. So usually they don't put this in the dish, which is interesting. It's one of it's probably because it was such a tourist dish because most of their food is very spicy. Mm. But they put this on the platter and people can put it on them, their own. They can put in as much or as little as they want. I, I just find it fascinating that it was... It's not even 100 years old yet. Yeah, it's not 100 years old. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to have a, bison, uh, a centennial party for it. I think we, we will. Years. Okay, so that's for later. And then we have everything else going. And these are our noodles. These are rice noodles, okay. um, which is great if you're gluten-free or any, any of your family are gluten-free. And we soaked these for about an hour just to get them kind of pliable, okay. almost like rubber band texture. And then they're going to finish cooking in the sauce. 
and then the dish is done. Now, this is not optional. You have to have rice noodles. Right? You do need to have rice noodles. Um, you could use regular pasta if you really didn't have anything and you had everything else. Um, but what's nice about these is they come in all different sizes, and you can really use whatever size you like. But, but these are the wide ones that I like to use. Rubber bands are not a substitute. Rubber bands are not a substitute, especially the blue ones. Oh, I don't use the blue ones. Oh, yeah. my Lord. Don't get me started Okay. <laughs> so we are ready to roll. Okay. Um, let's see. We're going to put this... This bad boy It looks on. like you're ready to walk and roll. So one thing I was, as we let this heat up, I'm going to try and keep my hand on this. Um, so we don't scramble the eggs because if you scramble the eggs, it just like you would regular, you know, scramble eggs. Yeah. It makes the noodles too mushy, and so it's just oh. too soft. So what I learned from my class was to we're going to cook the eggs completely, but you'll see how we're going to do this in the pan. Okay. And the noodles will finish cooking, as I said, in the sauce, and they should be completely cooked. We don't want them al dente like in regular in pasta dishes. So we're going beyond al dente to... Just perfectly soft, yep, oh, yep. And if you want to grab a spoon, uh, a fork for that... A fork. We'll need a fork for you that. ready for it? Yep, just, right. for, just to have it around here. So we're getting this nice and hot. So like I said, we have everything ready. Everything's in its place. I'm going to put these in the order that I'm going to use them, which I always think is helpful. We have the aromatics, and then we're going to put the shrimp in, and then we're going to put the eggs in, and then the sauce and the noodles, and then the vegetables, and the peanuts are last. Okay. And this is my wok. It's a cast iron wok, but if you didn't have a wok, you could just use a large skillet. A non-stick's a little easier for this, but um, anything that's large so you can push stuff to the side. Why do you think so many songs have been written about that versus the skillet? <laughs> Do you know any songs? About I know the walk? I, I, the hundreds. Really? Right? Remember Lou Reed, "Walk on the Wild Side"? That was a big hit about Thai food and <laughs> pretty woman walking down the street. Oh, John. Roy Orbison. I'm going to put in about two tablespoons. See of how oil. she's just moving on, ignoring just me. Okay, two on. tablespoons. Yep, and that's yeah. smoking hot. And we're going to throw our aromatics, which is the shallots, uh, the shrimp, and the tofu. Okay. Put that right in. I got my spatula right here. Yeah, they're not writing songs about skillets. You can't think of the one. Not many songs about skillets. Well, well walk thank you on very by. much, sir. Back rack, Al David. Okay. So the thing about woks or cooking anything high is that since everything's cut up really small, everything's going to cook oh, quickly on high heat. That smell. I, Isn't that good? That smells so good. And you can see that the shallots are cooking nicely and the tofu is getting just a little brown. We're just going to cook this about two minutes. And then we're going to move everything to the side when this is done cooking. All right, I want everyone to hear that when the two minutes are up, you're going to place it a little bit to the less heated part yep, of the wok. exactly. Right? And then I'm putting my shrimp in. Shrimp next. And we're going to cook the shrimp until they're almost done. They don't take very long at all, which is one reason I love putting shrimp in. If you were a vegetarian, you could just add more tofu. That's one way to do this. We're going to go let them cook on one side and then flip it over. Have you ever been to Thailand? No. Does this make you want to go? Uh, it does. Uh, not right this second, because I'd rather have the yeah. meal first. <laughs> But um, after the show, I think I would consider it. It's really a lovely. They're so they call so, it the land of smiles because everyone's just smiling all the time. It's really, really sweet. Yeah, it's a wonderful country. Actually, all the countries I went to were great. Are they the nicest people you've met? Uh, you they? know, huh? the Africans are really awesome too. If you want to know. All right. Yeah. I do want to know. Um, but the Thai were awesome. People in. Asia were just so proud and happy and happy to talk about their country and you know, I'm glad mentioning okay. this because this is an odd time for Asian Americans. I think it's kinda of interesting we're making this dish. That's right true. Now. Yeah. I mean it's it's something I've thought about. Um, but again I think that one of the best ways I'm gonna move that all to the side and I can answer your question before we put the eggs in. One of the best ways to really respect another country is by learning their food and sharing it. And that's what I hope I'm doing here. Um, I hope to be doing a fundraiser at some point soon so that I can give back to one of the organizations that I um, oh, nice. decide is my, my favorite. Yeah. So I'm going to put my eggs straight in here. And if you can see that, they're um, just cooking as they are. So they're yeah. not, I'm not scrambling You're it not yet. Scrambling. 
And just I'm just going to now cut the, the yolks a little bit. Seems like it's getting a little cooler here. I don't know why. It's probably from the liquid. So we're just going to. So shy of a scramble. Keep that exactly. And yeah. that you kind of want the, and it's, you know, there we go. It's okay if the, it all mixes because it's going to be mixed, but you're right. trying to cook the egg and have everything else to the side. I think so we're the just egg especially keep... is doing a fine job with the mise en place. It's right in the right spot. You know what? Once you have this all ready, it only takes 10 minutes to make this dish. Yeah, yeah. So see that? They're kind of yellow, white pieces, and we're going to push it all to the side. Right. And this is the fun part. This is when we put the sauce and the noodles in. So I like to put the sauce in first to hit the pan because that kind of gets all the fishy and the sourness to come out. And then we put, whoop, get that sugar whoop. in there. Uh, I failed you on that part. And then we put our sauce, our noodles right into the sauce. And this is just, it doesn't look like it's gonna happen, but this, the noodles will absorb this sauce. Mm. And um, when they're finished, when they've absorbed all the sauce, you're almost done. So when you prepped the noodles, you soak them in water, but they can still absorb more. Yeah, we just kind of soaked them because they were just soaked in, in tap water um, or hot water. If you're pressed for time, you can do that for, you know, half the time. I usually soak them for about a half, uh, about an hour. But yeah, they just see it's starting to soak up. They get soft. And everything else is staying warm. And everything else is staying warm. Oh, this takes about three or four minutes. Oh. And these are rice noodles. These are rice noodles, so they're gluten-free. It would be interesting. I don't know the answer to this. It would be interesting to see where our nearest Asian market is. I wonder if it's in Sacramento. It's or... in Roseville. Is it Roseville? Mm-hmm. And it's a good one, actually. All right, these are almost done. I can kind of tell by how much sauce is being mixed in. And let's give it a little taste, because we don't want these to be undercooked, which is always a little hard to pull one of these out. Mm. Want to taste that really quick? Tell me if you think it's done. Oh, well, that's a lot of pressure. I know. I'm going to use fingers if that's okay. Please do. It's very, this is, this is public access. It's casual. Ah, yeah, you fit right in. A little more time. Oh. A little more time. No. Mm. Mm. Growing up Already in Rhode tastes Island, good. We, um, I had a friend named Al Dante. Lived in Providence. Uh, good guy. Big guy. Big guy. Is he a pasta maker? Money. He owes me money. Uh, no, he didn't go into uh, the culinary arts, strangely enough. He's more of an enforcer, as it were. Albert Dante. We never called him Al. Give these another taste. Always the hardest part is putting one out. There you go. All right. You're testing me again? No one will ever know the difference. No one Just will ever. No one can, the that's right. No one ever sees what you're doing. I think that's going to be good. This is almost done. So yeah, I'm going to mix all this together. This. And we're going to then throw our veggies in. Done? Oh. Yeah, it's yeah. just about there. And then we're going to throw this pile of veggies in the carrots, most of these bean sprouts, and the garlic chives. These are just beautiful colors. The reason we cut these so thin is because we just want these to cook in the heat of this dish. We're not going to cook them for very long, about six seconds. So they're going to retain some crunchiness. Yep. It's more of a steam, I would think, a little bit. For yeah, them, you just maybe. kind of wilt them down. And yeah. that's why when you do really thin ones. Oh my goodness. And if you don't have a hand shredder, you just cut into matchsticks, little thin strips of carrot. Fair enough. And we are done. I'm going to oh. turn this off, put our peanuts in. Peanuts go on last. They're not even cooked, they just toss them in. Yep, just toss them in. And this is ready. Wow, look at that. My lord, that is beautiful. Would you hand me the plate, sir? Of course. And what's the Thai perspective on sharing food? Like, if you've made this oh, meal, do I actually question. have to share it with Oops. others or no? Uh, <laughs> I think call? everyone in the studio would like that. Oh, I'm so sad. Hang on a second. Always, always a restaurant cook. There we are. Let's do a little more on that plate. A little more? And a couple shrimp. And that is pretty much the typical. Oh, oh there we go. Hang on, one more shrimp. That's typical way that oh, it's served. That. Look at that. Are we getting that? In a restaurant. 
Look how beautiful that is, ladies and gentlemen. All right, now what are your recommendations? Squeeze it with lime? Yes, or? have to squeeze it with lime. All right. That's oh, also God, super important. Yeah, and right that of extra it. brightness of the sour lime is is key. And then, you know, you can mix some of those veggies in as much as you want. There's a little spice over there. Oh. You know, I noticed there's no pith in that lime. You just kind of move it from the fork. I'm going to okay. get another I'm gonna, fork. I'm going to do this uh, sans hot pepper right now. Oh, do I love pot. And, you know, I don't know if it makes me terribly obvious, but when I do go to Thai food, this is almost always what I get. I'm sure there's so much Thai food I'm and, missing out on, but I just love pot And I hope so that this exceeds your expectations. Oh. Mm. Mm. <laughs> wow. I'm oh, sure my you Lord. do that at every show. Um, what Sue, Sue was saying earlier, sweet, sour, salty. Salty. Spicy. Spicy. You feel all of that. I mean, I mean you're, you're just like little fireworks going up. This mm -hmm. awesome. stunningly good. Let's answer. hear it for Sue. What an amazing Thank meal. Thank you. Make sure all right. Now, that's a, mm. probably the most intricate mm. meal we've had here. Mm -hmm. It is amazingly good. And it wasn't that hard once you got all the ingredients cut up. Well, I think just it was pretty sure easy for me all in all. Yeah, I, yeah. Was, that's what I love about the show. You get credit. <laughs> I don't have to really do anything. Um, but let's say, Sue, um, let's go over how I can learn more from you. So can you do awesome. a little promo here? Yeah, so you can go to my website, which is suecooks.com. Let's put that on the screen. There will be, um, I do virtual cooking classes. Oh. And um, you can also follow me on Instagram at suecooks123. And um, I'm also on Facebook, mm. and it's Sue Cook's uh, business page. And the classes are really fun. I send the ingredient list out beforehand. We all do a cook along, and you can ask questions during it during the class. And you get to connect with people from um, all over the world, all over the country, just in your town. It's a super fun way to cook. And you get to learn how to cook in your kitchen with your own tools, which is super fun. What and if you ever want to do a private party for your family and they're all over the country or a corporate team building activity, the cooking classes are a great way to do that. And I can tailor the classes to whatever, um, whatever your needs are. Wonderful. Boy, Sue, thank you so much for thank raising us. Thank you. This us was awesome. It was so fun to hang out with you, too, in this uh -uh. studio. It was so fun. Yeah. You know what? An amazing meal. She has been my friend for, I think, 25 years, which show that she has very low standards for friendship, <laughs> maybe more. Uh, again, let's have a round of applause. What an thank amazing meal. This was super fun. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much, Sue. Um, I think that's it. We'll see you next time on Let's Get Cooking. Uh, our mystery chef, I won't tell you till another month has passed by, but gosh, what an amazing meal. Thank Sue, you. Thank, thank you Thank you again. so much. All right, see you, see you soon. Take care, happy cooking. See you in the kitchen. Bye.